Hello everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to the brand new Edexcel English GCSE Literature Papers and today we're looking at how to answer question B which is the Shakespeare questions for paper 1. We've already looked at how to plan this question please feel free to go back and look at that video but this video will focus on how to answer this question. So just to remind you very quickly about the structure of the papers, now all the GCSEs are terminal, which means all your exams come at the end, there's no controlled assessment. This exam paper is 50% of your course, obviously that means the second paper is the remaining 50%. One hour and 45 minute paper, two sections. Section A, which we're focusing on, is Shakespeare. And there are two questions already, one will be extract based, which we've already done the videos for and you can view those via my website. And also the more essay based question which we're focusing on in this video. In the second section you have one essay based on a post-1914 text which you would have studied in class. Two quick questions for you again to check on your understanding. One, what does the mark scheme say you need to do to achieve perfect marks? Two, what method should you use to answer the question in order to achieve perfect marks? So please pause this, note down and discuss your views and then when you're ready let's reveal the answer. So. There's the mark scheme. I'm not going to talk in detail about this mark scheme because we've already viewed that in our how to plan question, which goes through in detail the kind of things that you should cover. This is obviously the planning method. Again, we looked at that in our previous video. It's here if you want to pause and have a look at it. But again, do look back at the other video if you want to make sure that you've got the correct method in your mind. How to answer is what we're focusing on today. So you don't necessarily need an introduction although you may wish to have this as your clear evaluation. In my example, I'm going to actually create a conclusion. It doesn't matter. You need evaluation somewhere, so it's up to you where you put it. Now, what you need to then do is essentially looking at three PE paragraphs. It follows the method you can see in front of you. Point, evidence, explain, basic. That will get you now mid-grade. So you're looking now at kind of four, grade five at best if you are lucky. But what you need to make sure you're then doing is all the other aspects of analysis. Although in the mark scheme it doesn't necessarily say you need to have that analysis, but it clearly if you're analysing you're being perceptive. So that's the best way to make sure you are being perceptive and thorough in your work. Explore alternative interpretations, but you must make sure you also include context. Proofread obviously at the end what you've done very, very carefully. Use terminology. And that's exactly what you need to be doing. Okay, so please again pause this and have a look at that method, make sure you've got it noted down. But we've already done our planning. So let's look at our questions, shall we? So once more, in this extract, because again, we're looking at the second question, you will, it does make reference to the first question, question A. In this extract, there is conflict between the characters. Explore the importance of conflict elsewhere in the play. In your answer, you must consider how conflict is shown, the reasons for the conflict. 20 marks. Again, we've already done the planning in a previous video. Very, very important that you look at how to plan. It's very important that you understand and you can plan effectively because if you fail to prepare, you need to prepare to fail because without the planning, you're not going to get perfect marks. And in fact, if your planning is a standard that I've shown you in the previous video, you will get perfect marks because all you're doing is writing out your plan in full sentences. But here's our answer. So, firstly, Shakespeare presents conflict as something that occurs internally in his play. Nice clear point. Before Macbeth performs the regicide of King Duncan, his soliloquy in Act 1, Scene 7 clearly demonstrates that the character feels he should shut the door, for slash means I'm quoting more than one line, not bear the knife, as Duncan's virtues will plead like angels. So I've integrated my quotes, it saves me time, makes me look smarter, I get perfect marks. It's a win-win. <clears throat> this highlights that Macbeth recognises not only that it should be his duty to protect rather than kill the king, but also that Duncan has actually been an excellent king. There's my basic, uh, basic explanation. Then, the use of the simile, like angels, highlights not only that Duncan has performed his role excellently, but his performance is akin to something performed by God, or at the very least, God is extremely pleased with the work that he has done, which again, as you can see, going against that, creates this idea of conflict in terms of the eyes of God, not just in terms of society. This simile, is also, this simile also recognises the notion of divine right, which only adds to Macbeth's internal conflict as a character and the audience at the time, will be fully aware that by killing the king, Macbeth would not only be going to help for the murder of another, but that by killing the king, Macbeth would actually be murdering God's messenger on earth, adding to the sense of conflict and the notion that Macbeth should shut the door 
rather than perform the task. So notice that the context is being used. It's not just let's throw in some historical context about something random. It adds, it develops my analysis, and that's what you need to make sure you're doing to get perfect marks. Within this same soliloquy, Macbeth is also aware that such an act would plague the inventor, suggesting that like a deadly disease, the murder will infect Macbeth, causing him to wither and die, as well as potentially affect others around him and cause him to suffer. This also helps to highlight the seriousness of potential murder. Now, I could also have mentioned the outbreak of plague, obviously, during this time, but I don't want to get too bogged down. It's five marks out of the 20, and we're trying to write within a certain time frame here. So that's my first point. Additionally, Shakespeare also presents conflict in verbal form in the play. During the battle, Macduff refers to Macbeth as a hellhound and a coward, highlighting Macbeth's villainy and questioning his bravery. Comparing Macbeth to a dog from hell obviously suggests that Macbeth is a character who represents hell on earth. At a time when society believed literally in the notion of heaven and hell, the audience would see this as a sign of the extreme villainy of the character and his sinfulness, whereas a more secular, modern audience would understand the metaphoric significance of this. Furthermore, this noun phrase is also apt in regards to the relationship of the two characters, as Macduff is furious and upset with a character who ordered the murder of his household. Now again, it's not just historical and social context, it's also the context within the play. So here, this is why he's using offensive verbal conflict, because basically he's murdering his wife and kids. Macbeth's questioning of Macbeth, Macduff's questioning of Macbeth, also adds to a sense of verbal conflict, as it suggests that the character displays the opposite qualities required of a night during a medieval period where the play is set. This is a tactic also employed by Lady Macbeth in her attempt to persuade Macbeth to murder the king. Then you were a man. The stressing, so structural analysis here, the stressing of the noun man in her utterance places the significance of the notion of bravery and manliness being closely linked. Therefore, Lady Macbeth is suggesting that to be a coward is to not be considered a man, and as this notion is being expressed by Macbeth's own wife, the audience will detect not only verbal conflict between the characters, but the character Macbeth is now in conflict with himself regarding traditional roles. And then finally, with my conclusion, although again, we could have done this as an introduction. Finally, Shakespeare presents conflict as being something physical. Physical conflict runs throughout the play, helping to set the violent tone of the play from the very first scene in the play, Battle Lost and Won, highlighting the turmoil in regards to the ruling of Scotland, which very much mirrored the fears society had in regards to the leadership of England at the time the play was first performed. Throughout the play, this conflict is presented as being truly negative as violence only leads to characters' misery. What hands are these? They pluck out mine eyes. Here Shakespeare suggests that Macbeth is fully aware that his violent actions lead to his own downfall and the death of his wife. Will his hands ne'er be clean? I could also look at the use of the tragic hero there, but obviously again, saving time, making sure we've got perfect marks, and we're only looking to write this about 20, 25 minutes. Additionally, this physical conflict also leads to uncertainty for both of the Macbeths, seen for their use of the rhetorical question, as their sinful actions mean that God is no longer their guide and they're unsure of who to seek for guidance. Then this could have been my introduction, but I'm using its conclusion here. Clearly, Shakespeare uses conflict as a main mechanism for the events that occur in the play, but more importantly, the outcomes which derive from the conflict help to serve as a reminder to a country being led by a new king. To sin against the king will only lead to damnation and create violent turmoil within the country. So there you go. So you viewed the planning video, you know how to plan perfectly. You viewed the answering method and you've now looked at a perfect mark example. All you now need to go away and do is revise and have a go yourself. So thank you very much. Well done and keep revising.